Hi, welcome to Not Only Code, a channel for software developers who care about the craft, who want to improve their skills, who want to write better software. My name is Gregory. I've been working in the software industry for more than 10 years. Currently, I live in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, where I work as an engineering manager. In this video series, titled Becoming a Senior Developer, I will be talking about different aspects of software development and what does it mean and what is necessary in order to become a senior developer. If you already work in software industry, if you have around one to five years of experience, and if one day you want to become a senior developer, these videos are just for you. This is episode number one, in which I will give you a basic overview of what does it mean to be a senior developer, what are the responsibilities of senior developers, and what is the experience and skills required to get this position. I hope you'll enjoy this video, and let's start. All right, let's start with the definition. Who is a senior developer? If you look at the job titles among the big software companies, you might notice that there is no one standard of titles. Different companies use different namings for the same positions. I believe most of the companies use quite descriptive titles, like junior software engineer or principal software developer. Some companies add numbers to that, so you can have positions like software engineer 1 or senior software engineer 2. And yet other companies use numbers from 0 to like 100 or something like that. For example, you can be a individual contributor level 65. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these numbers because they feel like role-playing game. You know, your paladin is now level 78. But hey, if it works for them, it works, right? For the purpose of this video series, I prepared a basic career ladder so that we can place a senior developer and understand where this title falls in this career ladder. I believe these titles are somewhat accurate. Of course, as I said, they will not apply to all the companies, but I definitely seen each of these titles used by at least a couple of tech companies. Okay, so the first title is Junior Developer. It may also be called Associate Developer or, in some cases, Software Engineer 1. I've also met companies that don't have this title at all. That's because they do not hire people without prior experience and they only hire from the second or higher level. This job title usually applies to people who have just graduated from either university or bootcamp or who have moved from another job, another career and start their adventure with professional software development. The second title is the most problematic. In most companies I know this title is just software developer or software engineer. In description, sometimes it is added mid-level to emphasize that it's someone between a junior or senior level, but I've never seen it being a formal title. Level 3 is the core of this video series. Senior software developer. The title, the position about which I will be talking throughout the next episodes. Depending on the company, senior developer might actually be the top technical title and there is nothing further unless you want to become a manager and become a director of engineering or CTO. This usually applies to smaller companies that do not have well-defined career ladder yet. Level 4 in my ladder is called lead developer. The lead here doesn't stand for leading a team or leading a project, but rather leading a technical side of software development. I found out that in lots of companies, this title is called Staff Software Engineer, which I never really understood. Aren't all the employees staff of the company? Just like with senior software developer, in some companies, especially smaller ones, this might be the top individual contributor title. If you want to move further and get promoted, you need to switch to management. Larger companies and companies with well-defined career ladders usually at this point give their employees kind of a choice. You can either continue your career as an individual contributor or alternatively you can move to leading teams and become a manager. These two paths are not always mutually exclusive and some companies allow people to switch between them throughout their career. If you decide to remain an individual contributor, you will be expected to keep developing your technical skills and expertise. In such case, at some point you might get promoted to principal developer, 
software architect or maybe director of engineering. On the other hand, if you decide that you want to lead and manage teams, the next title usually is engineering manager and at some point you might get promoted to director, VP of engineering or maybe even CTO of the company. Now that we've placed senior software developer on the career ladder of software developers, and we know that this is usually the third among four or more titles, we can talk a bit about experience required to be a senior developer. Why am I talking about experience? Well, if you look at job offers for senior developers, you will notice that experience is usually one of the first requirements in the job description. Also, you know, since it's a senior position, you need to have some experience, right? You can't start your career as a senior developer, because otherwise the other titles, like junior software developer, just don't make sense at all. They just don't need to exist. So what is the magical number of years of experience that are required in order to be a senior developer? That's a good question. When I hire senior developers, usually I expect them to have at least four or five years of experience. Is it a fixed number? No. So why do I put any requirement at all? Based on my experience, four or five years is the time when people usually reach the level that I expect senior developers to have. However, please know that this is purely arbitrary number. I've seen senior developers who had three years of experience and I believe they totally deserve this title. I've also met senior developers with 10 or more years of experience and I believe that their skills were not really on a senior level. All right, now it's time to talk about the skills and responsibilities of senior developers. Today, I want to talk about five different aspects of working as a software developer that I find critical for senior developers. Five? Shouldn't it be just one? Writing code? Well, being a software developer is much more than just writing code. So let me explain. Number one, problem solving. Software development is primarily about solving problems. In most cases, the solution to solve a problem is to write some code. But that's not always the case. When you need to add a new feature to the application you work on and you decide how to write this feature, you're solving a certain problem. When you need to find a bug in your code, you're solving a problem. When someone asks you how to do certain thing with the software that you wrote, you're also solving a problem. And probably this kind of problem will not require you to write any code. So while we software developers spend most of our time writing code, code is not the goal. It's just a mean to solve certain problem. Remember that the solution to the problem and the code, the implementation, are two different things. You can write great code that will implement a poor solution, and you can have wonderful solution that is implemented poorly. Number two, supporting other developers. As a senior developer, you should be someone who less experienced developers will be looking up to. You will support other team members in different ways, maybe by pair programming, by reviewing their code, sometimes just by discussing potential solutions with them. Even though you might not be a team leader or a project leader, you still should be an example to follow by other developers. Helping others is not only about giving them solutions to the problems they're solving, it's also about making sure that they learn something from that and that the next time they will be better prepared to solve such problems. In all this, you will need to find a balance between your own tasks that you are responsible for and between supporting other people who might rely on your help. Number three, seeing big picture. This might sound like a cliche, this seeing big picture, but hear me out. Very often, when making decisions about approaches to certain problems and about how to solve them, I rely on my senior developers. They are experienced people who usually have a lot of knowledge about the software that we wrote. Sometimes I might not even know about existence of certain code and there will be always at least one senior developer 
who will remind me about it and will explain me why we can't use the approach that I suggested. So as a senior developer, you will be expected to support your team leader in making decisions and avoiding mistakes when choosing different approaches. There might be a situation where a new feature requires some change in the code and you might be the only person that remembers about some other part of the system that relies on this code and that other part of the system must keep working. You might ask why that part is not documented, but that's a topic for another video. Seeing bigger picture means looking a few steps ahead. You need to focus not only on the particular piece of code or feature that you work on, but also think about what is coming in the next one, two or six months and how will this feature be affected by the upcoming changes. You also need to think about how the code that you work on affects the whole system. You can't just look at the particular part, but about every single place that might be affected by what you're doing. Number four, programming. Of course, it has to be here. Programming is a big part of your job and you need to be able to do it well. You need to be able to write good code. What is good code and does it really matter? This is a big topic. I will cover it in my next video. For now, let's just say that good code is much, much more than just correct code. So as a senior developer, you need to be able to write good code. You need to be very comfortable with at least one programming language. Do you need more? Knowing multiple languages will let you write better code in each of them. In some companies, you might be expected to know at least two or three languages. However, in the past I've met senior developers who I consider very good programmers and who specialized particularly in just one programming language. Being an expert in one language might be a bigger advantage than being average in multiple languages. So if you're learning multiple languages and you don't feel that you're particularly strong in even one of them, I believe it might be a good time to change that. Number five, learning new things. Software development changes all the time. Even though the foundations of the languages that we use today are 40 or 50 years old, the way that we write software changes often. If you're a front-end developer, you must know what I'm talking about. That's why learning new things is extremely important and I believe that this is a critical part of being a senior developer. And when I'm talking about learning new things, I don't mean only programming languages or libraries. I'm talking about learning new processes, new techniques, new patterns, new ways of becoming more efficient. Also, I'm talking about learning the domain that you work in. Let's say you work in a financial institution. If you want to be great at your job, you should at least have basic understanding of what are the different terms that are used by product experts. You need to understand the goal of the software that you write, who are its users, and what do they do, why do they need it? You don't need to become a domain expert, but you need to be able to understand it. I believe that people who are able to learn new things quickly will always be ahead of those who can't do it. And remember that learning new skills is a skill in itself. You need to understand what works for you, what is the most efficient way for you to gain new knowledge. All right, that's it. That's the end of the first episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it useful. If you have any feedback, I will be grateful if you can leave a comment under this video or drop me an email. My contact information is below the video. In the next episode, I will be talking about what is good code and how to distinguish good code from bad code. I hope to see you then.